so skip the intro. Let's just look from the head. Where's our first dominant chord? Yep, E flat seven. Okay, so play the E flat. Just the note, just the root, not the chord. Good. Now, what we have to ask ourselves is, is this the the five of the next chord? What's the next chord? Good, so play A flat. Yeah, E flat was the five of A flat. So that means that this E flat was a functioning dominant chord. All right, let's find another example. What's the next dominant chord? Yep, so that's G7 to dominant. Okay, uh, put your finger on G, play the G note, just the root. And then what's the next note? Uh, no, what, what you've done is you've looked at C and said C is the 4 of G, which would be correct. But what we need to know is, is G the 5 of C? See what happened? It is, right. So, uh, so that is a functioning dominant chord. What's the next, uh, the next dominant chord in the song? All right, so put your index finger or whatever finger on B flat. And then uh, play the next. What's the next chord? Right, so is B flat the 5 of E flat? It is, so it's functioning. All right, that, so finding a functioning chord is that easy, and it's more common than, it, than not. And just, just look for the roots, because what we're going to learn will work more or less well, regardless of what the quality of that one, that quote, one chord is. What we really want to know is, is this root of the dominant chord, the five of the root of the next chord. Okay, so if it went E7 to A minor 7, we can treat it like it's functioning. If it goes E7 to E dominant 7, we can treat that E7 like it's functioning. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. All right, in a in like a really practical way as far as like something we're going to learn now, which is how to make an alteration. Okay. All right. So the thing about functioning and non-functioning dominant chords is this: a five chord wants to resolve to one chord, and if it does, meaning a functioning dominant chord five to one, then you can add extra tension under that dominant chord, which will add to a greater sense of resolution when it gets to the one chord. Okay, you can exaggerate that that tension and that draw to the one chord because when you get to the one chord, it'll just be even greater relief. And you don't really want to do that with non-functioning chords, uh, although you can break that rule. But the idea is that you're adding tension to a, a dominant chord, which then doesn't resolve because it doesn't go to the one chord. And that's why you don't want to add the tensions, these extra tensions, um, to non-functioning dominant chords. You want to add them to functioning dominant chords. Again, this, these are rules that you can bend and break, but, um, but for now we're just going to work on adding tensions to functioning dominant chords. All right, so what do you think a tension might be? So far we've learned chord tones, and then we've worked on adding scale tones. So what's, what, what could be more tense than a scale tone? Yeah, like not a chord tone, not a scale tone, those notes in between, right? Uh, which we can call passing tones. So there's like chord tones, scale tones, and passing tones. Chord tones where you spend most of your time, it's the most comfortable, most relaxed, and after a while, the most boring place to be. Scale tones are like your buddies, where you spend less time there, but they're the, it's more interesting uh, to be hanging out with your buddies uh, than just your cat. Or whatever you know um, and then finally you get to passing tones and passing tones are uh, it could be a, a, a wide range of possibilities a passing tone could be merely something unexpected that 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 you wouldn't want to linger around you know like a scene people what's going on what's going on you know or or it could be something or it could be something more like um, 
you know, like some kind of hostile person screaming at invisible people around him. You know what I mean? You're like, okay, I'm going to back up a little. It's just, and you don't want to spend too much time with those passing tones. That's the idea with the passing tones. Um, but in the case where you're on the way home from your friend's place, let's say, for example, you're, com you're, you're hanging out with scale tone and then you're going to go home to home tone, scale tone, uh, sorry, chord tone. And then, and then there's like some tension and the traffic was lame and only bad music on the radio and it's kind of hot and your air conditioner doesn't work in your car and you get home you're like oh man i'm home and you get your you know your cold drink or whatever and you get your ac on for a minute and put on some music and you sit back in your comfortable chair you know what i mean like that's the effect we create with these with these tensions so the tensions are easy to come by you take your chord or scale tones and move them up or down a fret I mean, more or less, that's a very, very simplistic way of putting it. But it's uh, the we, we've got is we had chord tones, scale tones, which are extensions. We add the scale tone on top to extend beyond our chord tone, and then you have alterations. And alterations are using some of those passing tones. So, for example, if you had your root, which you can't change, because if you do, it's just a root of a new chord. You've got your third, which you can't change. And your seven you can't change. The reason you can't change those notes is because those are chord tones. Those are integral. If you don't have those, you're not playing the chord anymore. So what you need to do is you need to take your scale tones um, and kind of move them to where they don't belong. So I'll give you an example. Let's do E7 to A major 7. Go ahead and play this, just your basic E7 to A major 7. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to play uh, E9. Play your E9. All right, and then do an A, an A major 7. And, and go ahead and include the 5th on the B string, just so we can have some good voice leading. So we had E9 to A major 7. And that's a functioning 5 chord to a 1 chord. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try to add a passing tone or a tension in there. So go ahead and play your E9. And here's what I want you to do now. Put your bar your index finger down across that 6th fret so you'll be you'll have the 5th the 6th fret on the B string and pick up your pinky. And now you have a flat uh sorry a uh, yeah, flat 9. This isn't like where we would end our song, right? We don't want to. We don't want to sleep on the subway. So, so then, yeah, right. Yeah. So then you go down to your A major seven with a five. And so here was our five chord, which, because it's functioning, allows us to get some tension to a one chord. All right. Now it was. Yeah, you creates this cool voicing. But in reality, you don't even need a nine. You could just do a five to one. Okay. There's other possibilities too. Let's try this out. Play an E nine. Now move your pinky up a fret so it's a sharp nine. Yeah, and then let's go and try to resolve it by going to an A major 13. Well, you're doing an A major 9. I did an A major 13, so same fret, but B string. Yeah, and the only reason I did that instead of an A major 7 was just so we had cool voice leading. Instead of doing this, like, which is all right, because there's still good notes, but this, we had just voice leading. All right, let's try another one. Um, Play your E9. Now put your pinky, instead of on the B string, keep it on the same fret, but put it on the high E string. Now this is our 5. Now that's just a chord tone, so to make it a passing tone, let's change it 
And and again, we can change the five because it's not really integral. The five doesn't tell us if it's major or minor or dominant. Uh, and that's why we left it out of our original voicing anyway. But now we're going to uh, alter this to be, let's say, a flat five. We'll just move it down a fret. And I do that by barring with my index finger across the sixth. Good. And then let's go ahead and do a, um, a major nine. Cool. So we had a five chord to a one chord. Good. Let's try try a, an E seven sharp five chord. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's it. And then you can do your A major nine. Good. Yeah, it, the other one resolves into a scale tone. Well, we, we resolve into a scale tone on both of them. And the only reason I did that, instead of just doubling the, the octaves, um, was mainly for interest. To go... would be fine. But I thought it was more interesting to go... into our nine. So all the things you are, we've got F minor. So I just do like F. Watch, I'll I'll just give you an example. F minor nine, uh, B flat minor thirteen, and I'll resolve that down to the fifth. E minor uh, seven. Uh, e minor. Uh, sorry, E flat seven followed by a flat five to A flat major seven. So what I did there was this. So then we got the uh, D flat major. I'll do a nine. Then we got G seven to C major seven, and this is a functioning chord because G is the five of C. Go ahead and play G seven. Yep. All right. Uh, something is in the way of your hand there. What is that? Is it a cup? There we go. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, good. Now let's go ahead and um, let's try uh, sharpening the five. Just play your shape like this. So we had a root, a flat seven, a third, and then the five. So that's our five. And to sharp it, we just move it up a fret. Fourth fret, B string. Yep. And you just add that to your rest of your shape. And so how I do this is index finger, middle, ring, pinky. That's how most people would do that one. There you go. And then let's go ahead and just resolve that up to a C bar chord for a moment. Cool. Now, of course, you could have done your C major like that, or with a 9. How about that resolve it to the C major 9? So you had... Like that. That's pretty cool. Good. Do your G7 sharp 5 again. You're doing that in a, in a way much different from how I'm doing it. Um, what I'm doing is index finger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky. So take a look at my hand. Index on the E string, middle on the D string, ring finger on the uh, G string, and pinky underneath. Cool? There we go. And then 
so then what what that was was where am i at oh yeah d flat major nine to g seven sharp five to c major nine And then you just kind of continue with that stuff. So I'll just play a little bit. C minor 7, I'll do an 11. F minor with an 11. I got a B flat 7. I'll do a flat 5 to an E flat major 7. To an A, flat, an A minor 7 flat 5. To a D7, I'll do flat nine. And then I'll do a 13. After that, they tell us E7 sharp nine. And then A minor. What I did there, I just did D7. I did a sharp nine, flat nine, and then I did a G triad. I could do G major 7 um, and then they yeah uh, did I repeat something no that's it yeah F minor 7 flat 5 to B7 I'll do a B um, B7 sharp 9 and then E major 7 maybe 